So when we're preparing for anesthesia, the, the number one cause of infection after surgery is the source of bacteria comes from the skin. So getting the skin clean is, is a number one issue for us. So we gotta clip the hair to uh, remove all that source of bacteria and then scrub it clean after that. One of the things you can do if your dog's coming in to have surgery, be spayed or so forth, then um, the day before is give them a really good bath and get them clean. That makes a big difference for us when we're doing surgery. The thing about bacteria is that we can't see the bacteria. We don't know where it is. So we, when we do this surgery prep, Emma's starting in the center. And you notice how she goes out to the periphery as she goes. She starts at the surger, surgical site and then she moves outward as she scrubs. So the cleanest spot is right in the middle. And then if, if, you, if she happens to pick up some bacteria, if she's dragging it on that gauze square, she'll be dragging it out to the outside. And we do this multiple times to make sure she's clean. So this is my sterile gown. And these are my sterile gloves. So I'm gonna open these up without touching them. After. So we've scrubbed the dog and to try to eliminate bacteria. One of the things I do with my lab coat is a really a cover that I protect myself from all the germs of the world. Before I go into surgery, I take this outer cover off. And so I have clean clothes on underneath. And then I'm even going to do, before I go into the surgery room, I am going to change my shoes. I took these shoes off and put these shoes that I only wear in surgery. So I'm not tracking any bacteria in there with me. And so then I'm going to go through the same scrubbing process with myself that we did with the, the dog's skin. So I'll, I'll scrub my hands three times just like we did the dog's skin, but I'll even actually go through a process where I try to get every, each fingernail, and then I do each finger on each side, and try to go through this methodical process to make sure that I've covered all the areas. Because you can't see the bacteria that's on your skin. You want to scrub every inch of it to make sure that you've done it. And we'll rinse this off and we'll do this three times over. Now Emma is in the surgery room and she's putting on sterile gloves so there's absolutely no bacteria on her hands at all. And she's using sterilized gauze to use the scrub. And she will do the same technique with the circles starting in the middle and working her way out towards the edge. And even going to the extent that she's using her left hand to touch the sterile gauze and transfer that to the right hand and the right hand touches the dog. So that keeps a, a potential for bacterial contamination from going the other way. So this gives us the cleanest possible surgery site that we can have. Hey, I've got myself all scrubbed in. I'm covered in, this is sterile. The gloves are sterile. This drape is sterile which means there's no bacteria on it at all. And the dog is clean. You can never sterilize the skin. You can only reduce the bacteria on it and get it clean. So then I'm gonna drape this in. So now I've covered up most of her body and I have just the sterile field exposed. So we have a limited amount of bacteria here that can contaminate our surgery site. So this little girl is a lucky one. She was, uh, she just got spayed today and she was adopted out through the Danville Area Humane Society. So she looks to be a purebred Rottweiler. I don't know what her story is. And she's an adult dog and she's very sweet and well adjusted and trained. Um, so when you're going to get a new pet, think about going to the shelter and getting a dog. They have all different types of dogs there. and. Uh, Save one. So, um, very common. There's this. What is it? What is it? He gets. Oh! Oh, you're saying it. You're saying it. Oh, hello. You are. <laughs> It, it just smells bad, you can eat it. <laughs>